morning, guys. Thank you for joining us. Well, Eric's like my free agent acquisition, right? <laughs> Bringing him over, he was a stud at PFF, and that's such an important part of making sure you have the right people. And I have a lot of really smart people around me. I'm learning every day. The analytical battle. When did you embrace it? What do you take from it the most? What do you kind of keep off to the side? How much the teams actually use all this? So it's being used. It's, it's being basically underutilized. And that's, that's one of the reasons I decided to get into a business like this because I knew all along this was not an exact business. You could get 32 GMs around here right now with their hand up saying, I'm on the edge of my seat saying, this is not exact. And, and we need more help and, and make it more exact, make it more mathematically sound and, and your decisions more sound. So uh, when we start pitching these teams, it's really important for me to go in as a former GM and not, not just a data scientist who will say, all, you know, have an idea. I can go in there with the assurance that I know how it is. We don't want to force feed. If you ramrod data analysis and third party into a GM or a head coach, you have no chance in this league. Mm -hmm. There's an evolutionary process, really, really important. Do you think it's, it's more advanced in like in game or like in team building? So it's, it's right now, it's in game, but what we're doing at Sumer Sports, we are solely focused on the team building side. We have basically 30 uh, data scientists and engineers. There is no team that has probably more than one, one fifth of that. One fifth of that. Yeah, yeah. So no team is putting in the resources that we have that we could go in and say, we're your third party and we can provide you with unbelievable information and then you apply it as well to your team. Well, not only that, but most teams, they apply their analytics to in-game stuff, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, most of the team, you know, Baltimore has a coach who has, you know, a, a analytical background. Uh, Cincinnati uh, mm -hmm. does as well. Uh, Philadelphia, you know, there aren't that many teams you can think of maybe Cleveland, Baltimore, uh, Philadelphia, who's in the Super Bowl this week, who actually like sort of pin down surplus value of draft picks, surplus value of free agents. And, and so what we're trying to do is, A, do that better, right? Do that better than anybody else in the NFL, but also be able to do it for every NFL team if you want it using their information, their grades, things like that, where as opposed to, you know, just going in and telling them, hey, this is how good all of your players are. We're, we're trying to come in and say, given you think your players are all this good, let's what's the best roster that you can construct out of those players and all, all right, available players? Chop, I want you to give these guys your roster lessons <laughs> that you've taken from <laughs> analytics and let's see how many let's see if this if they get approved. How many all right. how many Thomas Dimitrov approves? Okay. Uh Quarterback is the only thing I care about. It's the only thing you care about. Only thing I care about. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm picking up positional value. I mean, I assume that's like kind of like. What, what's your of, order though? Like, give me your it's order. Oh, I love this. Uh, quarterback, uh, wide receiver, corner, um, left tackle, edge. I like that. You're, so you, you're so, you, so you read you read the coverage versus pass rush article that we wrote back in the day. <laughs> I basically read them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he yeah. wants he wants to eliminate the running back position from the field. <laughs> he just wants that gone. I, like I, I guess I, for me, I'm like I think your edge is low. I think your edge is too low. So I, I think, think I think what's low. interesting is, and this is something that evolved in my understanding is, I think pa coverage units are more important than pass rush units. But the problem is, is coverage is like weak link, right? So like it's yeah. your fourth best defensive back is more valuable than your fourth best, you know, pass rusher. But I think your first most important pass rusher is more valuable than your first corner. Sure. It's sort of this really weird. And this is stuff that we're coding into our, our systems here at Sumer because it, the, the game is really nonlinear like that. Which is easier to scheme up if you're deficient, pass rush or coverage? Oh, uh, I would say if you're deficient, it's got to be, it's got to be. It's got to be coverage. Yeah, I, look, I'm a big believer. We missed. I mean, hands up. We'll talk to Dan Quinn about this. Vic Beasley, we thought he was a guy. We missed on two of our pass rushers. You guys now have a guy who's outrageously talented on your defense here, that Dan Salivan. Every time I talk to him on the phone, he can't speak more highly of, of a Parsons. I'm just – that pass rush thing to me, it just continues to just be a bumper for me because you make a lot of mistakes in the NFL. You think you make mistakes on quarterbacks? You make a ton of mistakes – on pass rushers, unfortunately. Why are other teams not hiring Dan Quinn as their next head coach? Well, I think Dan Quinn has an unbelievable amount of talent as a coach. I think he's very passionate. I think it comes down to, quite honestly, an ownership group being looking for a certain type of a coach. I think it's more Dan saying, I don't really know if I want to go to one of these organizations that has an ownership group the way that it is. Let me just tell you this. You guys had Bill Parcells, of course, many, many years, and Bill had been public about it. The longer you're in it as a head coach, the, the smaller your, your group is that you want to deal with, and it becomes a handful. The owners don't want to hear that, right? The owners yeah. are like, wait a minute, who, who are you to judge us? 
as a, as a team builder, you need to have the right situation to be, you know, a survivor. Do you, you love Dan Quinn? Love Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn should be a head coach in this league. Dan Quinn, and, and anytime someone wants to throw a dart at Dan that he should have done this or this during his years, he is a really, really thoughtful and, and aware person. And he's a very passionate person. So he's taken what needs to be learned over those years. And I think, I think he's the guy. Honestly, I wish, I wish he would have been with, with George Payton over at, at Denver. I thought that would have been a really good fit for him. Do teams just blanketly favor offensive coaches now? For, in my opinion, the more that I talk to them, yes, they have this idea. But, but then when they really dig in, if you talk to a GM like myself, you, you can make massive mistakes on bringing in the offensive coordinator. We saw what happened in Denver. Everyone's thinking that guy's going to bring us home. And it really comes down to we're, we have a process on our, in our grading. I want to throw this over to Eric. We're, we're, we also are looking at how we're going to be grading and analyzing coaches. And the coaching situation is you can talk about all of these grades. If you don't have a bang-up leader, and every one of these GMs in our focus group are saying, we need a leader at the front of this. We need a communicator. And then we'll continue to work on some of these objective measures. Well, it's so, it's so hard because you're often – hired for a job because of a different job you did right and so you might not be suited for that and oftentimes what happens is these guys try to they try to say look i'm still brilliant as a head, as a play caller that's why i'm here but then they have to also incorporate the in-game stuff mm -hmm. and and all that mccarthy's going back to calling plays after sure. a few years mm -hmm. uh, uh frankly i thought mccarthy did a great job with fourth down decisions you know that kind of stuff over the past few years but a lot of these young guys who are offensive coaches they come in and they say i want to call plays and be a head coach and sometimes it's too much for guys to hack uh, Thomas Dimitrov, Eric Eager, uh, join us here on 105 Through the Fan. All right, I always they, – they always ask this question. I don't have the answer to it. When someone asks, analytics doesn't take into account X, how do you answer that? We're working on it because it doesn't take into discipline and passion for the game, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. It is something that if you look around, the same thing, take those 32 GMs and you ask them, they will say to you categorically, we did not miss on the player, we missed on the person. Think about that mm -hmm. because we're, we can – you get 20 people on coaching side and 20 people on the scouting side and a guy's right foot is splayed out. We all see that. It's not but, – but we don't necessarily determine whether Vic Beasley had the passion that we really thought he needed to carry it through a career. That's complicated, and we're working on it. So, sorry, guys. My headset's been on and off, so I don't know if you <laughs> asked something. Working out, <laughs> working out Dan Orlovsky and Brian Billick. Uh, so – our, the biggest problem we see in NFL coaching today is, I think you may have touched on a little bit, the mismanagement of clock. Mm. Final two minutes. Romo talks about this stuff a lot, but uh, Jerry Jones is on with us every Tuesday, and we're like, okay, why did you guys mismanage the clock? You didn't have timeouts and this and that. And he goes, well, his basic answer is everyone's bad at it. <laughs> And that's and and that's how it looks. Yeah. Are you? Uh, what's your answer to that? Or how are you, are you guys addressing that as well? It's hundred percent. I mean, I think you know. Like Andy Reid, right? We're sitting here. Andy Reid's biggest criticism is the clock. Sean Payton just got eighteen a year. The clock. Yeah. All right. Uh, Matt Lafleur, Aaron Rodgers. You know these these decisions that decide games, but there seems to be a stubbornness not to do it a different way. Yeah, but think about how coaches watch film. They they watch film cut up differently than we watch games right like we've all watched you know as, as fans and media members we've all watched more games from a to z than most of these coaches they watch film they're like here's all the inside zone runs here's all the outside zone runs when they watch they watch way more football than we do but they don't watch it sequentially the way that we do and so guys like us who have like watched the flow of the game like okay that should be a timeout that should be a, a spike that shouldn't be a spike and they we're, we're we have so many more mental reps in many ways because you know these coaches and thomas can attest to this everybody inside of an NFL building has way too much to do right so the the you know they do you know and I know Dan did some of that when you guys were in Atlanta like they do go through these things but it's just repetitions you only get 17 tries a season you know four or five of those games aren't close so you're really only a, a dozen games a year where you're actually doing it and when you watch film you are watching film in not the order that a game actually goes interesting well, look, I look, I, I look back to 16 Super Bowl. You guys are probably trying to steer clear of it. Have you ever talked to Dan about it? <laughs> no. It's a, he, he's been asked it in press conferences, I think. Look, we, you know, Dan, in, in the end, you remember, Dan ended up demoting his D coordinator, so he was so focused on, of course, he was focused on the defense, and he relied on Kyle Shanahan to be the dude mm -hmm. on the offense. And instead of run, 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 you know, of course it didn't happen. And my point to bring this up is there's a lot on a head coach's mind, and I'm not, I'm not sticking up for the head coach because, believe me, I've sat in that, that sweet 
upstairs near Arthur Blank, pulling my freaking hair out, not just with Dan, but with Mike Smith. That just happens, right? You're, you, we're looking at it to Eric's point from a different perspective. But this is one thing that analytics can help you do. It can help you get, it can help you get synthetic reps, whether that's like drafting, right? So simulating drafts a million times before you actually get into the room or simulating end of game situations before you actually get there. What analytics can do, and all these guys, like, you know, Thomas is a brilliant evaluator. Dan Quinn's a great coach. It's like, but what we want to be able to do is supercharge your ability through analytics to apply your subject matter expertise. And that's what analytics is. It's an efficiency tool to help people who have that harder knowledge to apply it better. All right, we are the Cowboys flagship. Mm -hmm. We have on Jerry and Steven Jones twice a week. Your experience with the Jones boys in the front office. Now, I don't want you to immediately go, it's great, it's a wonderful experience. <laughs> oh, great guys. Because our, our fans want to hear you say that you felt like you could take advantage of Jerry. Jerry's not really the GM. <laughs> Steven's the money guy. Give us the truth, Thomas Dimitrov. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. No, look, I, I literally only dealt with Steven. I never dealt with, with Jerry, quite honestly. Steven and I had a, had a working enough relationship where we would talk. Didn't deal with the Cowboys that much. You know, here's what's funny. When you're doing trades in the league, there's a win-win element, right? You need to be able to communicate with people, and you, you also deal with the people that you have some relationship with. And we, I didn't call Dallas that much to do deals, unfortunately. Sorry, that's all I can – that's the <laughs> truth. What is your understanding of what their roles are? Uh, my understanding is Steven's a guy that we would go to as any of us as management, and he would go up to uh, to his father, and they would talk about it, and he would come back and get back to me. I never once uh, communicated with, with Jerry on the phone in my years. That was probably because I was a when, – when I started, I was a 40-year-old GM, and there was a difference there, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think we're a little closer in age. Can we do a sample trade call? Like yeah. For, 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 for nobodies like us, <laughs> how does it really sound like – Let's on trade Zeke. Okay. Let's, get, let's trade Zeke <laughs> right now. Bobby, you be, you be Steven. <laughs> right. that and, and he is right. he is Thomas Dimitro. All right. Hey, hey, Tom, how's it going? Hey, what's up? Hey, is hey. there a certain, first off, is there a certain time these calls usually take? Like, is there a, is there, the is there an unwritten rule of don't call past this from GMs? No, it's kind of, it's it's whenever it is. But 10 p.m., 11 p.m.? No, man, it's it's whenever it is. Okay. Yeah, it's whenever it is. All right, Tom, how about a conditional seventh for Zeke? What do you say? Uh, look, conditional, no way I can do that. That's ridiculous. What are we talking about here? You know, no, let's look, look, the funny thing is, is it, it's, there's banter mm -hmm. and there's joking about it. I mean, we're talking about Philly, right? I was talking about Howie Roseman yeah. in early years when Howie and I were getting to know each other, he would call me all the time. I want to, I want to, I was about to throw in the F word. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wants a second. I'm like, you can't have a second for everything. He, uh, Howie, that's just not how it goes. I will not do deals with you in the future. He and I ended up doing a lot of, you know, just a lot of work together. We didn't always consummate. Let me just tell you very quickly on this. I know we're talking about trades. My very first trade as a GM, I call up Al Davis, Jerry's buddy, right? Uh -huh. And I say, Al, looking to trade D'Angelo Hall. Got him. We traded, six, you know, it was a second round or whatever. He calls me up two weeks later. I want my GD pick back. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, Al Davis, I'm a, I'm a neophyte general this manager. I'm like, like oh, my God, this is the guy I'm dealing with? He told me he was joking. Well, six, six weeks later, they trade him to, to Washington, right? So it kind of worked out for me, but I can't believe it. I didn't fleece Al Davis, but I thought, whoa, that's a that's How a tough personal one. do things get where you guys – use your memory like they said that the nets were not going to trade Kyrie Irving to the Lakers they weren't going to give Kyrie what he wants because they were mad at the player it that seemed a little personal how often does that happen personal happens a lot I mean there's so much there's so much gamesmanship with the players with the agent but but then you also I've talked to Eric a lot about this we can look at the data and data could say this but then I am a big believer in what is how it's going to affect your locker room. You guys know that. You guys look like dudes, dudes. I mean, it's important, right? You got to have we have potato chips and cigars well, and hangover. Yeah. Well, I saw tuna. I haven't had, I had, I had eaten it yet. I'm, I'm trying to hold off, so I can't. I can't take it anymore. And I have to eat. All right, give us the top two or three teams that impress you analytically before we let you go, and the bottom three. I, I the bottom, the bottom <laughs> three. Start, potential Yo, this is yeah, potential <laughs> there ain't right no there. cupcake. There ain't no cupcakes so, over here. So, so, and don't say Dallas if they're in the, the bottom. Truth, the truth is that there aren't a bottom three. Like there's a group of that are all kind of in that bottom cluster. And the difference between baseball and football is in baseball, if you are in the bottom three, you're a decade away from being in the top ten. In football, because of companies like Sumer Sports, if you're in the bottom three, you are a, a year or two away from being in the top ten. So that uh, gives, I think, every fan base hope. To me, the top teams. You, you're looking at Baltimore, Philadelphia, 
uh, Cleveland, I think, all have really good processes. And when you look at, you know, former folks from those teams have all gone on to do great things. Uh, Buffalo's an honorable mention for me. I think Minnesota's an honorable mention. And for Dallas me. is where in that tier? Top 10. Yeah, Top I 10. mean, they, they, they have a guy named Tom Robinson who's very, very good, a local Patilli. Actually, we hired Adam Bondahar onto our company as a former analyst. Who's the there. lowest? Who's the lowest? Yeah, who, oh, yeah, yeah, thank Adam, you, Tom. Yeah, 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 Stop I, being soft, Eric. I didn't even know Adam left. <laughs> who's prehistoric? <laughs> <laughs> who's prehistoric? Uh, Thomas, do I, can I plead the fifth? I don't know. No, I don't no. Want to lose. well, you have to just I, say, I, would say I mean, I would say a team like Tennessee doesn't have an analyst that, that does. So, like, if they don't have some even doing it, then maybe by definition they're at the bottom, and, and maybe that, that's not editorialized at all. But those guys, those guys are there. They want to be educated. That's yeah. my point. Uh -huh. But don't but don't ramrod it. If right. you come in acting like we're going to save the day, right. John Robinson got fired 7-5. and five. That, by the way, outrages me. But but I think he probably wasn't thinking on the front end like Mike Vrabel might might have wanted. Who knows? Yeah, Who knows? you guys are incredible. Uh, Thanks, if you guys. want to come back any day this week, go ahead and do so and uh, hit us up when we're back in Dallas. And good luck. It's Sum Sumer Sumer Sports. Yep. yep. All exactly. right. There it is. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. Enjoy Thanks, the John. Super appreciate Bowl. It. RJ, appreciate. It.